Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today uh, to be enlightened by our amazing guest speaker, Alejandro Ortiz. I hope I pronounced that correctly in the correct Spanish accent. Uh, Alejandro is a Macquarie famous um, alumni and uh, he is specializing in the areas of communication, soft skills and coaching. And he's going to impart uh, to us some wisdom regarding all of these topics and more. And uh, we didn't color coordinate. This is really interesting on Zoom with both of us wearing almost the same shirt. Yeah, uh, cool. Welcome, yeah. Alejandro. Well, Prashant, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this very nice invitation and I'm very happy to be here. And especially being with uh, you know Macquarie University um, students, staff and alumni, because in the end, I do love the university. Even though I finished my MBA last year, I'm still in touch with the university. So I'm super happy to be here. And thank you again for the invitation. Thank you, Alejandro. I guess um, let's start off with uh, you know, introducing yourself, your story, your life, and how you're in Sydney, let alone Macquarie University. Well, great. Well, so first of all, I'm Colombian. You can maybe tell because of my accent. I'm very Latino, right? Um, so I'm Colombian. Uh, my background, as I said, it's industrial engineer and economics, right? And in 2011, I was working in the uh, petroleum industry back in Colombia. However, uh, we were having uh, a team building issue at that moment back in, in, in the company for over maybe one year. And my boss at that time decided to hire a company to overcome that issue of team building, right? So when I just joined that team to be able to overcome that issue, um, I was amazed about what I've just learned out of that company, which is, you know, a coaching related company, right? And they were, they were explaining a, a lot of, you know, things about, you know, improving communication and engaging with others. And I was amazed because at that time, that was not my skill. I was really shy, introverted, um, not, not a people person, right? I was really into numbers, being behind the computer, and, and, you know, because that happened, I, I was like, I think I need to study something different now in order to improve my soft skills. So I decided to study with that institution for over four years coaching. And so once I just finished my studies, I was completely amazed because of course I just developed my other side of the brain, which is my right side, trying to be more a people person and was super nice. I decided to come to Australia to study my MBA because I really wanted to be living in a different country. And last year, just very close to the ending of my MBA, I decided to launch my business, which is called Alejandro Ortiz Consulting. And it's aiming mostly um, teach you know, soft skills, improving communication, career counseling, and also organizational coaching, acting as a business partner and trying to help companies all, also from the human resources perspective. So that's, you know, a short uh, way to just to tell you about my story. Wow. Now you mentioned about soft skills, Alejandro. And um, what, what do you mean by these soft skills? What are soft skills? Well, we to me, uh, uh, a very short way to describe soft skills or maybe to define soft skills, uh, it's the, the uh, skills we just learned while dealing with people. Right, it's all about people. And just to give you a bit of difference between hard skills and soft skills, for example, we learn uh, hard skills at school, right? So we learn physics, we learn maths, we learn uh, marketing, which is good, right? But then when you get to the uh, workplace, right, and you are a finance person or uh, um, a person that is specialized in marketing, right, and you need to sell a project or you need to work with others, or you need to live you know, under pressure all the time, or you need to solve problems, right? Sometimes we are not good at. So soft skills are putting into practice your hard skills while dealing with others. So it's all about people relationship. And this is all about you know, um, having this engagement and um, finding the way to improve empathy and communication. So soft skills, again, it's all about putting it to practice our hard skills when dealing with others. Thanks, Alejandro. Now, I guess your 
an authentic expert to talk about this because you mentioned that you come from an economics and engineering background where it is predominantly hard skills and a lot of uh, our students uh, who've signed on right now are from accounting or finance or economics, very technical disciplines where soft skills are not that obvious and soft skills are not really part of the content um, when you learn about those disciplines. Whereas if you're studying marketing and management, you're always communicating, you're always dealing with people. So what were your steps um, regarding that transition? Uh, I'm sure it was hard. I'm sure it was challenging. Uh, how can you inspire some students here who are trying to make those steps if they come from very technical backgrounds? Yeah, that's true. Well, first of all, when you need, when you want to improve a uh, uh, soft skills, right? Um, I can just maybe give you a few recommendations, you know, talking about my experience. First of all, always remember that only 7% of our communication is verbal. So the rest is number, right? Which means that in the end, even though we're very good speakers, right? People will pay attention to the tone of the voice plus the body language, right? So in the end, every time you deal with somebody else, try to pay attention to the way you move your body, right? So I do remember taking a course here in Sydney about public speaking, and they taught me how to present and how to look at the camera and how to smile, because in the end, even though my, vo my voice can be good, right, it's not what really catches others, I think, because of the 93%, which is non-verbal. Right, so I needed to improve my my, my my communication skills, right? So a recommendation, for example, is try to move your body, try to be more relaxed, right? And also try to improve your lighting. Look at this, for example, I'm just in, like in my studio with a lot of light because in the end, when the lighting is really good, people will pay attention to you a bit more. At the same time, try to be genuine. So when you are with somebody else, try to get to, the, to know the person first, try to listen first, and try to be genuine. Maybe you want to become his friend or her friend, right? So when the other person feels that you are being genuine, the communication improves and the engagement improves, right? So once again, improve body language, which is really good. The tone of the voice should be very nice. Try to vary the tone of the voice. Improve lighting, right? Be genuine uh, when you know dealing with others and try to get to know the person first so that you can improve your communication skills. And then I'd like to perhaps extend that. I didn't, I didn't plan on this question, but only because you've mentioned this, Alejandro, uh, a lot of our students might be going into interview contexts, uh, either one-on-one -on -one or maybe a panel of three or five people. Um, and that can be challenging uh, with that layer, uh, especially if it's on Zoom or even if it's face-to-face. What's your experience and tips in this sphere? Okay, about you know being interviewed on Zoom, mm -hmm. for example? Yes, everything you mentioned, but when the layer of an interview comes and you're stressed. Yeah, okay. So what I've learned over time is in spite of my background is that um, in my tip to everybody, it's remember that we have three communication channels, right? And even when being interviewed or when dealing with somebody else. So first of all, the visual communication channel, which is the way we present to others. So, um, you know, uh, the way we just dress up, for example, or the look or the hairstyle, right? People who are very visual, let's say an interviewer who's very visual, will pay attention to the visual factors, right? The way we look, we present, and, you know, uh, you know the physical appearance, which is important to some people. The second communication channel is the auditory, right? So it's all about facts, numbers, arguments. So when, for example, presenting an idea or exposing an idea, right, it's all about coming up with facts that support our idea. So for example, I'm the best candidate. Why? Because I've done this, I've studied this, or because I've achieved this, right? So when the person that is listening to you and it's auditory will love to hear your facts, your arguments, and that way you can connect with the person that it's your interviewer. And the third aspect is kinesthetic because a lot of people are you know, very sensitive and sensory. So for example, when you are talking about your experience or an anecdote, talk about the way you feel. Talk about the way you engage with others or you involved um, other people, right? 
included other people, right? And also try to move a bit, right? To be more flexible and smile because the person that is the interviewer and is very kinesthetic will love to feel your emotions, that you are there, that you really want to get the job. So it's about the, yeah, that intuition, that gut feeling, right? So this is kinesthetic. So when you include in your presentation, visual factors, auditory factors and kinesthetic factors, you will be you know, engaging with the person in all these communication channels. Uh, thank you so much, Alejandro. And actually, I noticed something in the way you even gave that answer. Is that even a technique with communicating? I noticed that you primed us and you said there are three points, then you expanded them, and then you said the same conclusion. And now it's ingrained in my head, just you showing your fingers. And then you showing your fingers helps trigger in my memory what you said. Is that a technique that you've learned? Uh, yeah, can you elaborate on that? Yes, because in the end, what happened is that, and as I said, for example, when I say three communication channels, it's of course my verbal communication. But when I say three and I show my fingers, right, this is nonverbal, right? Wow. So you will be emphasizing your idea while, you know, playing with your verbal communication plus your nonverbal communication. And also, for example, when you say verbal or verbal, right, it's emphasizing your communication. So it's all about trying to uh, reach to everybody out there. Because if the person is very auditory, we'll be listening to you. But the person who is kinesthetic will be paying more attention to your hands, right? Or to the lighting. So that's why it's important to include all those um, key um, aspects in your communication approach. And I guess that gives us um, some weight when lecturers say, uh, students don't turn their cameras on and it makes it very hard for us to teach. And um, some students or anyone will really think, um, well, the, the lecturer can still talk, but it's actually very hard when we don't receive uh, those cues back to us. So I guess um, that's a very good uh, point to let students know in classes in general. Yeah, that's right. Especially because when somebody uh, has the, the, the camera off, right, which is completely understandable because we just come from different backgrounds. So I don't want to push nobody to do it. However, what is the learning? Because we're just here in this world to learn, right? When we, we just um, uh, speak through the um, Zoom call, right, without the camera on, right, we're just communicating through the auditory channel, which is the mm. verbal, which is the facts, right? But the person on the other side of the camera will begin to see us smiling <laughs> or the body language or even the physical appearance or the way we look, right? So maybe the person, just by looking at us and you know playing with the three communication channels, will be being amazed. Oh my God, that person is smiling or is paying attention to me or is moving her or his uh, hands while speaking to me. Oh, I like it. Because we never know who's going to be just right on the other side of the camera. So that's why it's important to turn on the camera in order to have a better performance and presenting ourselves in a very good way. Thanks, Alejandro. Now, you also mentioned that you, you went to a class, am I correct, regarding learning some of these ideas? I did it, but just outside my core university. Yes. So I guess the question I will ask then with, with um, keeping in mind that we have lots of students here is what, what is your um, advice regarding this lifelong learning and growth mindset and always being willing to learn? Because sometimes, you know, us even as lecturers think we know everything. We don't need to learn anymore. Uh, we can just stick to what we know. Um, but what's your experience and advice regarding just that thirst to learn, whether it's communication or whether it's any topic, really? Yeah, great. So what I've learned over time is that even though we're very good at something, uh, let's say finance or accounting, right, which is great, all uh, take a bit of time to work on your self-awareness and self-development, right, which is basically the person you are. So, for example, in my case, I was really shy in the past before 2011, right? So I need to be more extrovert. So in order to do so, I need to study coaching. That's in my case. In some other people, in some other people might help maybe teaching others or helping others. Because when you help others, you engage with others uh, much better, right? With some others might help try to 
work you know, in different groups all the time. Try to vary uh, your friends. You are just working on assignments because you will have another challenge, another, um, let's say, issue, right? Which is getting to know another person, dealing with people with, uh, from other cultures, right? So that a bit of uncertainty will give you other skills mm -hmm. to engage with others. So try to step up your comfort zone with dealing with others, which means, for example, work in you know, different groups uh, when doing assignments or help others or work on a self-awareness, which is going to help you try to uh, improve your people, person skills. And that's a great uh, segue to another topic that I want to uh, discuss, Alejandro, um, is regarding things like showcasing and networking and social media on LinkedIn, um, how that, um, how you can weave that in with what you've just discussed. Yes, yeah, so networking is very important, especially here in Australia, because what I've learned of over time is that um, even though we just, uh, uh, after finishing our degree career in Macquarie University, we are so talented because I've learned so much. The thing is in the end, when you just get to the workplace, right, um, we don't know how to communicate, or we don't know how to uh, present, or we don't know how to, uh, let's say, speak up. You know, sounds very simple, but it's true because also it happened to, to me and to, to some other people, right? So networking is very important. So networking, um, uh, maybe a couple of uh, tips to, to give you guys today. It's, first of all, if you want to improve networking, try to help the person first, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, you, you get to know somebody and that person is in need to maybe sort out something with, I don't know, his friend or her friend or has an issue with economics or with finance, right? Try to help the person, right? So when the person receives your advice, right? Will be super happy. Oh my God, this guy, this lady just was super keen to help me, right? So that person will be speaking with other people about you. You know, him or her, they're very good at something and they, they gave me very good advice. So maybe that person will be keen to talk to you later, right? And maybe a third person and a fourth person, right? So when you help others, those people will be the ones helping you later. Believe me, because that happens. And the second tip in order to improve communication, uh, improve networking, uh, sorry, it's try to listen first. So when you listen to others, right, you will be keen to understand what is happening in the other person's life. Right? Maybe the person is a bit shy. Maybe the person is passing through a difficulty, right? So when you listen to the other person, that person is giving you the information in order for you to help them, right? So then you will be able to come up with something. So for example, I have I met somebody before that will begin to help you. Or I've met somebody in the university that was passing through something similar. Let me just introduce you guys. Or oh, I've met somebody who is we, we were able to maybe give you an interview, right? So while listening to others, that person will be, give you a lot of information and with that information, you will be able to come up with a solution so that you will be seen and perceived as a person that supports, that helps, and that will increase your network. Because in the end, everybody will be speaking about you because you will be, you, you were the person, you know, uh, willing to help, you know, that person in maybe certain circumstances. And we should probably put this networking into practice. We do have an audience here. So maybe we have questions from the audience uh, that they'd like to ask Alejandro. Uh, and we thought we're stealing, stealing every single question here. We've got Nina, Kate, Catherine, Caesar, Catherine, Ni, Twen, Sophie, Blake, Joel, Alice. Any questions from anyone? By the way, Catherine Knight, nice to see you again. It's been a while, right? It has been. Great to see you too. Great to see you again. Maybe Catherine has Just a Just wondering. Oh, sorry. No, go for it. Who was it? Oh, okay. Um, Alejandro, I was just wondering with all these tips and tricks that you're giving us, um, obviously you would have developed those over time. And is there a recommended um, process that you would recommend for us in terms of like which ones to implement, how long that took you 
um, and how long that might take us. Because obviously like there's all these great ideas that we should be implementing, but sometimes when you focus on doing all these great things, it detracts from like other things that you do. Well, that's a very good question, Blake, and thank you very much. Well, uh, everybody has a different learning curve, right? And everybody has a different uh, speed learning, right? Because everybody's different. In my case, because I was super shy, right? And maybe you wouldn't imagine that I was the shy that I was, right? Um, it took me maybe four years, right? However, what I've learned over time is that if you want to make this process faster, try to meet with somebody that is very good at something that you would like to learn from. So for example, let's say I'm going to give you a, a, a very good example. In uh, January or February this year, I wanted to host an event in Macquarie University. And I got to know uh, Catherine for the first time, right? I didn't know that Catherine was so good at hosting events. So she's very good at you know, logistics, coordinating the event, sending emails, the marketing campaign. Amazing, which is not my skill. It is not, even though I have hosted events before, but I'm not that fast and that good in that sort of sense, right? So Catherine, the way she was organizing the event and you know, working with the logistics was amazing. So then I just understand, oh my God, when you meet up with a person or you work with a person that is very good at something, you will learn from that person as well, right? So if you want to learn something, try to meet, try to, let's say, engage with a person Maybe that person will give you the, some tips and you working together will be able to host an event or something in a very good way. Because sometimes we don't have one skill, but another person has it, right? So try to meet with a person so you will be able to share skills, right? And you can learn from that person. So again, you can learn by yourself, it might take a while, or you can just um, engage or just get together with a person that is very expert in something and you might learn from that person. So just to give you some things to learn that skill. And as again, the learning curve will depend on, you know, every, every person because everybody's different. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, I'm not the expert here, Alejandro, but I might add a, a bit to what Blake has asked because I guess from our experience and what employers are telling us, uh, and industry partners tell us is, um, and, and you've alluded, alluded to it as well, like you'll always need to continue learning. And I guess the employer is not looking for, you are the expert, you are willing to learn and you've got a growth mindset and you are teachable. Uh, and so if, you've, if, you're, if it's four years and you're in the first four months and the employer can see that, I think you'd still be valued as long as you are on the journey. And because some people are not teachable, some people are, they don't have a growth mindset. Um, I'm not sure whether that's valid, but um, that's my experience from what we've been discussing with employers and industry partners. And, and that's true, Prashant, because in the end, what, what is happening at the moment is that a lot of companies, especially big companies, are not hiring people who are skilled at something. They are hiring people who have the right attitudes. Right. And as you said, for example, they are willing to be trained or they are willing to help, you know, another department or they are willing to, you know, solve problems or they are, you know, show empathy all the time mm. or they are happy, you know, really happy showing happiness when, you know, performing the task uh, or they are willing to maybe help uh, a person that is in difficulty. So when you have the right attitude and your employers sees that will show you many things, will teach you many things because it's all about having the right attitude. So that's why this is, you know, talking about soft skills, right? When you have the right attitude, when you're keen to learn, you are keen to help others within the, uh, the workplace, the employer will help you because in the end, they are just looking for that. In the end, skills are teachable. And the attitude sometimes is not that easy because, right. you know, some people just were born differently. So that's why having the right attitude, it's really good if you want to be hired. Thanks, Alejandro. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Thank you, Blake, for the question. Um, Cesar, uh, yeah, I had uh, two questions really. Uh, it's about the presentation in Zoom. Normally we have, for example, you see I have a background. That's okay, use background when it's a presentation. And the another question is, 
about the slide because really I had the uh, discussion with my team or partners and how much information should be in the slide to engage, you know, the, uh, the audience. That's my question. Okay, well, Cesar, thank you very much for your question. The question is a very good one. Well, first of all, um, when, you know, for presenting or, you know, showing something on Zoom or Meet or uh, Write or Teams, right? First of all, look at the camera all the time. Oh, because okay. what happens to many people is we should look at the screen. Yeah. So when we look at the screen, we don't look at the other person. You see the oh, difference? Yeah. I look yeah, at the yeah. screen, I look at you, yeah. oh, right? Okay. So yeah. always look at the camera. It's a bit tricky because we are not used, we are not trained to do that, right? Yeah. But look at the camera because the person on the other side, it's thinking, that, oh, Cesar is really paying attention to me, which is great. So yeah. always look at the camera, right? Okay. About the background, it's nice. I mean, uh, professional background uh, that is not very distracting will be nice. So the one that you have, it's great. So I, I wouldn't mind about the background as long as it is professional and, you know, clear, not without pixels, right? It's great. And about these slides, right? Remember that I just mentioned the three communication channels, right? Yeah. So uh, if you want to communicate with others properly, right? Only just showing your slides with people who are kinesthetic, they will be bored because they will like to see movement and interaction and smiling, right? Mm -hmm. So what I do sometimes, I just, you know, uh, present the slides and sometimes I don't present slides. So I just, you know, talk to the person in a very nice way and, you know, uh, ask questions and maybe breaking rooms or maybe activities, right? So they will be keen to interact with other people over Zoom, right? So you will be playing with the slides and without the slides, which is really good. And at the same time with the slides, when including your, or using your three communication channels, first of all, the visual communication channel include pictures in your slides, right? Okay. Auditory include facts, for example, numbers, percentages, cite some uh, biographies, right? Because in the end, the person that is auditory will begin to see details and numbers. And when it's uh, kinesthetic, you can maybe include a video, right? You can include animations or, you know, just the, this interaction like the one I'm just doing with you because this is very kinesthetic. So try to include the three communication channels when presenting on Zoom. All right, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, any other questions from the audience? I think uh, Alejandro will need to wrap up soon, isn't it? Because of your time. Okay. Maybe five or 10 minutes. How long do you have Alejandro? Uh, I can have 10 minutes. Sure. Any other questions from the audience? Yeah, just just one. Um, if you were to sort of have your, and thank you for, you know, the very kind words about my organizational skills. Um, if you were to sort of wrap up your, um, in, a, in an elevator pitch, the importance to an employer of not necessarily having the hard skills and the soft skills. So, you know, you may be approaching an employer and you don't have, you haven't ticked off all of those boxes, but you have the desire to learn. How would you represent that to an employer? Well, that's great. You know what happened, uh, Catherine, and to everybody is that in the end, uh, the employers know that we are not 100% talented in everything because we're human beings. We are not perfect, right? So in the end, um, when you say, for example, and you, you answer to a question, right? And you don't know the answer or you don't have the skill, right? You will say, oh, you know, being super honest, I don't have that skill or uh, I'm not very skilled in that sort of topic or I have training, but it's not 100% developed. However, what I've learned over time is that uh, when I face this situation, this is what I've done. So this is my experience, right? And at the same time, I really want to learn because I'm really keen to be working in this company. You know what? Over time, working in the finance industry or the manufacturing, right, has been my desire since I was a kid. And once you get in this opportunity, I'm so happy. So uh, even though I'm not completely skilled in that sort of topic, right, I really want to learn. I really want to show you that I have the talent to develop that skill. So when they see that you are really eager, 
that you are really keen to learn, they will give you an opportunity because in the end, you're being honest, first of all, you're being upfront that you don't have that skill developed, right? But at the same time, you are showing them that you're really keen to learn and you're really keen to be working in that company or in that department. So when they see the attitude, once again, the attitude, they will give an opportunity. So once again, be upfront, be honest, and also show the interest to be working and to develop that skill when being employed by that person. Thank you. My pleasure. Any last question from the panel, from the audience? Nikita has a question. Yeah, I just want to ask like really common uh, question from employers is to present yourself. Uh, tell us about yourself. And what would be a good narrative uh, in order to present yourself? Like what should I focus on, for example? I understand that I like, have to be honest, but what is the better way of uh, telling about just my story or something? Do you have any suggestions? Yes. A very good question. So you mentioned something that's very important. First of all, be honest, right? And the second thing is be genuine, right? So be genuine means that you are going to be yourself. The more transparent you are, the better, because in the end, if the employer is going to hire you, is going to hire the person that is just in the camera, right? So for example, let's say what I, what I do about myself, I'm Colombian, right? So they know I have an accent, right? I do have an accent, right? Some people like accents, some people don't like. But in my case, oh, I'm Colombia, I have this accent. And at the same time, you can talk about your background. Okay, what do you study, right? What is your um, uh, work experience, right? And be super honest about your work experience and your background. And at the same time, talk about your hobbies. Because people also connect with people who have hobbies, right? So I have these hobbies, I like to do this in my spare time. Uh, if you have a family, you can also talk about your family in a very general way. But most importantly, be genuine, right? Uh, talk about the way you are in a very genuine way. Some people uh, have like a list of things to mention. Some people have like a schedule, but sometimes employers, they just want to listen to you in a very relaxed way, right? Being yourself, be super genuine. So by including, um, your background, where are you from, your hobbies and personal experience and personal experience, I think will be nice, especially when, and when you show, you show that sort of features, right? Try to be honest and genuine all the time. If you are genuine, you don't need to worry about nothing because the, the outcome will be always nice, will be transparent, will be super honest. So that will be my recommendation. All right, thank you. Thank you, that helps. Bye. Thank you, Alejandro. So I guess to sign us off and to send these students off with, uh, with um, your last few words of wisdom and pointers, what would you like to send them off with, Alejandro? Uh, well, I can come up with maybe two or three, but I would say that remember, guys, that soft skills, it's all, it's all about people-related skills, right? It's the way you engage with others, right? And once again, um, we are all, you know, human beings. We are all different, right? So the more soft skills you have, the better to engage with others, the better to be hired or to be employed. Because in the end, people want to listen to people. People want to deal with people, even though we have different backgrounds, but we are people first, right? So my recommendation is try to find a way to improve soft skills. Anyway, you know, attending a lecture, um, or um, you know, uh, doing an online course, or um, improving some skill at the university, or asking for help to somebody who is really skilled in something, but try to improve some skills because in the end, people want to deal with people, right? And when the other person is feeling that you are paying attention to them, really keen to help them, right? They will like you because we are people. So. Again, soft is super, super important and be genuine and honest when dealing with others. So that will be my recommendation. Thank you so much, Alejandro, for all your different tips and advice and pointers and everything that you've discussed today. I've certainly gained something and I'm sure everybody else here has. So we've got some staff, we've got some students um, and uh, I'm sure they've completely grown by the session and being encouraged to continue to grow 
uh, in, this, in the sphere of soft skills, transferable skills, and employability. Thank you so much, Alejandro. My pleasure. And I hope we see you soon. Thank you very much for this invitation. And just a final, final words is just, in my case, for example, I received a lot of support and help from Catherine and from Kate when I was a student. So thank you very much, Kate and Anne Catherine, because you gave me this chance to be able to show and to display these to other students. So a recommendation for you guys, the university has a lot of uh, departments and skilled people who are keen to show you and to teach you something different or just to give you a hand. So reach out to them because in my case, it, it, it worked, right? So again, guys, the university has a lot of departments and people who are really keen to help you. Ask for help, reach out, have a phone call, a Zoom call, and I'm sure you will be able to find answers to your concerns. So once again, thank you, Prashan. Thank you, uh, Kate, and thank you, Catherine, for all your support. And I'm super uh, happy to, you know, even host a different event with you, Prashan, because I'm really, really happy all of what I've learned when being a student at Macquarie University. Indeed. Thank you so much, Alejandro, and thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.